All right, you guys, looks like you have a test coming up. This is uh, our review for test on data analysis and statistics. So it's kind of a fun chapter, easy points, I think, you guys. Typically a lot easier than your conics uh, lesson or your logarithms lesson. And then uh, we got series and sequences uh, coming up in next in Chapter 12. So, All right, so given this data set, there's 10 numbers there. Find the mean, median, mode, range, and standard deviation. Okay, easy point, you guys. So the mean is you add up all those 10 numbers and divide by 10. So you should get 23. The mode is the one, or let's see, I think I did median next, you guys. So the median is you get the, the number in the middle. Well, there's two numbers in the middle, so you average those two numbers, add them up and divide by two. I know they're the same right there, but the median is um, is 24, okay? And the mode is, uh, there's the most is this 13 right there, so I think I highlighted those in purple, yep. Yeah. And then uh, the range is the big number minus the small number, so the 35 minus 13 is 22. And then the standard deviation is the square root of each number minus the mean squared. So I just do this number minus the 23 squared, this number minus the 23 squared, this one, this one, this one, this one, all 10 of them minus the mean squared, add them up, divide by 10, square root all of that, and you get about 7.9 on that. That's the standard deviation, okay? Just saving some time right there, okay? So find the mean, median, mode, and standard deviation of the set of numbers obtained by adding five to each of the data set in section A. So so here is uh, our answers. Now, what you can do is, is add five to all those numbers and then recalculate or if you know the shortcut you guys you add five to everything except for the range and standard deviation so here's uh, the answers that we got in section a so i'm going to add five to that i'm going to add five to that add five to that but the range will stay the same and the standard deviation will stay the same so uh there you go okay and then when you multiply let's go ahead and multiply all those numbers by five and when you multiply all the numbers by five everything including the range and the standard deviation gets multiplied by five so you should get those numbers right there okay all right so here we have a normal distribution with a mean of 76 and a standard deviation of nine use the standard normal table I think it was uh, I think it's 759 on page 759 in our algebra 2 books uh, anyways, I have it in this uh, flip chart here. So um, use the standard normal table to find the percent that a randomly selected X value from the distribution is at most 64. So at most 64 just means less than or equal to 64. Like I'm at most 53 years old. <clears throat> so I'm 53 or less, okay. All right, and then we gotta use our Z formula. Our Z formula is um, uh, X, the number that we're focusing on. Uh, which is this 64, minus the mean, there's the mean right here, divided by the standard deviation, which is 9. All right, so when we plug that in, we get negative um, uh, 1.3. So that's what Z is. So our, our Z score table, our standard normal table, is for our Z. So we convert this X to a Z score. So our Z score with this information right here, <clears throat> excuse me, is negative 1.3. So here's uh, that table. Oops, so, so we got this graph right here. Sorry, I was thinking ahead a little bit. So negative 1.3 less than would be this area. Fortunately, that table always gives us the area to the left. So if it said greater than, I'd look on the table and take one minus that, and that'd get me this side over here, okay? Uh, anyways, but it's less than, so we're just looking for the table value. So here's that table value right there, and then, and then so negative 1.3. Here's negative 1. Here's negative 1.0, negative 1.1, 2, 3. Negative 1.3 is, I think I enlarged that, yeah, so 0 0.0968. So the area of that little region is 0 0.0968. Let's answer the question. So about 9.68% of the time, an X value will be chosen from this population at random uh, and be at, uh, at most uh, 64. Okay? All right. So in a survey of 582 people, 57% said that the summer is their favorite season. Uh, I'm included in that. So what is the margin of error of this survey right here? Although I like to fall a lot too. Um, so the margin of error formula is plus or minus 1 over the square root of n. Okay, so here's our n right here. So our margin of error is going to be 
uh, 1 over um, the square root of 582, which is going to get us about 4.1%. So plus or minus. Don't forget the plus or minus. If you did, I'd ding you some points on that. Okay, so now given interval, it's likely that it contains the exact percentage of the population that says the summer is their favorite season. Well, this is our margin of error. This is our margin of error. Uh, from this uh, percentage of our sample right here. So if we take this 57% and add and subtract that 4.1%, that'll tell us that uh, our true population uh, mean would be somewhere between 52.9% and 61.1%, uh, that our true population would say that summer is their favorite season right there, okay? All right. Uh, so a state legislature uh, conducts a poll to determine if the voters want to increase their property tax to make a highway improvements. What is the minimum number of people to be surveyed if she wants a margin of error to be at most 3%? Okay, so here we go. We want to go at most 3%. Our margin of error formula is plus or minus 1 over the square root of n. So this 3% goes right here. So we'll go plus or minus that 3% at most, so greater than or equal to, plus or minus our margin of error formula. And we're solving this equation for n. That'll tell us how many people to make it at most that 3%. All right, so let's square both sides. So when we square both sides, that you know, 1 squared is 1, and the square root of n squared is just n right there. Okay, now we'll multiply both sides by n and put the n over there. Now we'll divide by 0 0.0009, and we get n is greater than 1. 1,111.1111111, so it keeps going right there. Okay, so since we're talking about people, then we round up. So there needs to be at least 1,112 people to have a margin of error that's at most 3%. All right, you guys, if you're in my class, you're going to have that assignment. Good luck on your test, you guys. Take care.